so if, for instance, we had this triangle, and then we did the same thing, but we just put it upside down. So even though they're not in the same orientation, they still could be congruent to each other. So if we said uh, x, y, and z, and then we said it doesn't matter, m, n, and o, okay? And so now, for this to work, we need back-to-back -back angles, and it doesn't matter which way we go with the angles. So we went this way. If I said then this, okay? We would need a side, and it doesn't matter which side we do, it just can't be the side that's in between those two angles if we're going to use angle angle side. So if we go in order, we, we can do this side, and then let's do this side over here. So then once we've proven that, even though that they might not look to you like they're congruent because they're upside down, because we have the arcs and slashes to prove it, then we can come back and write our congruence statement, which again, the first one, I don't care how you write it, right? It doesn't matter the order. But now we have to make sure that we're in the right order. So what goes along with X in this one? What's the one arc? O, right? It's got to be the O, right? Because one arc and one arc. And then the Y has two arcs. So the two arcs over here is N. And then my slashes lead to the third side, which is Z. So again, you have to look at the symbols, meaning the slashes and the arcs, to make sure that your letters are in the correct order. And then again, if they, if the next step would have been to not just prove the triangles congruent, my triangles again are congruent by AAS. If my triangles are congruent, then we could have went to the last step, which if they would have said prove that XZ is congruent to MO, now we would use what as the reason why? C, B, C, B, C. And again, the only reason that I can use C, B, C, T, C is because I've already proven that my triangles are congruent. So that's just the extra step. You can never use this step right here before you actually have your triangles proven that they are congruent. So again, like I said, if we would go back to uh, Friday, this would have been number three, this would have been number four, but now we have four different ways to prove that triangles are congruent. So when you attack the problem, you gotta keep that in the back of your mind. Somehow, some way, I gotta come up with side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Now today, specifically, you're probably going to have these two more often than the first two because just because we're in that section. But again, keep those other two in mind because they might just throw one of those in for you. Okay. So I think we'll uh, be able to see one of these funky figures here in a little bit, but this is what we need to get better at, right? So let's try it out. So again, the very first thing, if you're going to try to work on this in class, I very much recommend you drawing this picture on your piece of paper. So as you're doing the problem, you can also write on your figure. It doesn't have to be a perfect figure, okay? It can be real quick. You're all funky bow time, right? And again now, if the book gives you something that's marked up, just think about that, but don't necessarily put it on until you do that step in your proof. So like yesterday's assignment where they put those slashes on the one part, I would have put them up there if I would have drawn them. All right? Now some things you can go ahead and put on there right away because you can't do anything else about it. For instance, right here, WR is parallel to ED. I'm going to go ahead and put my little arrows. WR is parallel to ED. And 
Again now, any time that they tell you that things are parallel to each other, what's the jump in your mind? Alternate interior angles. So somewhere along the line here, if I'm going to do this proof, alternate interior angles might be involved or probably will be involved. Okay? So, here's the question again. Where do I go? Well, obviously, blah, 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 given. It's still my first step. Got to have a given. Okay? And as we write the given, then we do the things that we can. And those things right now are these arrows. That's pretty much it. So, does somebody want to attempt what the next step is? Anybody? Or, let me push you in the, to use what they tell you. L is the midpoint of WE. Use that to your advantage. Now here's the thing. Just because they say L is the midpoint of WE, is L the midpoint of RD? I have no idea. So because they didn't tell you that, you cannot assume that it is the other way also. That's kind of a trick question that you really got to get into your mind. But does that make sense? They would have had to said L is the midpoint of WE and RD for that to be true, going both ways. I don't know what so, they've only said it for WE, but what does that tell you? Perfect, right now. WL is congruent to what? LE. Why? Definition of midpoint, or if you wrote the midpoint theorem, we would accept both. But again, see why this isn't the bisector one? It's not a segment bisector because why? They didn't tell you it's a segment bisector. Basically, it's the same thing though, right? The midpoint and the bisector, a segment bisector, exact same result. But again now, because I said this, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put a slash there. And for some of you, maybe you need to use a different color. Something, all right? So, now where the heck do we go? What did Keith say? The parallel lines result with alternate interior angles, and what's true about them? They're congruent. So, what are alternate interior angles in this case? Think about our definition again. It's got to touch the parallel lines and the transversal. W is congruent to E. Can I use something else with the same kind of result or the same step, the same reason why? Yeah, I can remember alternate interior angles. If there's a cross section, there's always two sets of them. So I could have used what you guys said angle W is congruent to angle E, or I could have used what? RD, right? Now, do I want to do that? Do I want to do both sets? Let's see. If I did both sets, I'm going to put one arc here and one arc here. Okay? And then I would say angle R is congruent to angle D. As I do this now, remember the three, or sorry, the four ways that we can prove that triangles are congruent. By drawing my arcs and my slashes, do I have one of those four things? Remember now, go in order. So again, maybe you start with the side and say side, angle, angle. Did we ever have side, angle, angle? No, so yeah, you just go the other way. Angle, angle, side, is that one of them? Yeah. So if I can do angle, angle, side, I prove that my triangles are congruent. So again, I have to come back here and finish this one. Why can I say this? Definition of alternate interior angles. Perfect. And now we just proved that the triangles are congruent. Again, now, I am going to come back and use the given, or sorry, the proof statement from the book. Why? 
then I don't have to think about trying to match up my angles perfectly. But again, if you want to match up the angles perfectly, you just look. Two arcs to two arcs have to go together, one arc to one arc, and then the one that doesn't have anything. So, triangle WRL is congruent to triangle EDL by what? Angle, angle, side. And are we done? Or do we have to go the one step further? We're done. Why? Because we got to what they asked us to prove. Now, can anybody look at this and find a different way of doing it? Just because they're parallel doesn't mean they're congruent. Okay? It's a good thought, but just because of that, that doesn't make anything congruent. The other thing that's got to keep in the back of your mind, and I know this is going to sound awkward, but we never want ASS. Okay? Or side side A. And that one just doesn't exist. A lot of people fall into that little trap, but it doesn't happen. So, any other way? Tom? So, yeah, so another way that I could have done this, so this perfectly works, but what if I didn't see that both of my alternating interior angles? I could have came back and said angle RLW is congruent to angle ELD by definition of vertical angles. But then, this would have changed. Then we would have changed to, like Tom said, angle side angle. But the same result happens. Same number of steps. Well, actually, probably not. This one, if you would have done this one, it would have probably been one more step. Because then you would have split these two up. And even if you would have split these two up, that's totally fine. You just have to say alternate interior angles twice. Okay? But does it make a little bit more sense what we're seeing here? Use what is given to you in the problem. They're trying to kind of guide you down certain roads. All right, let's see what the book did. They did the vertical angles one. No big deal, right? We're going to take a lot of time to do a lot of these today because I know some of you are really struggling with this. So don't worry about any of the stuff. Don't worry about any of the worst words. Just look at the problem. I don't look at any of this stuff. We just want to concentrate on this part up here. All right, so here's my figure again. All right, what is given to me? They put the arrows on the, on the little quadrilateral. Everybody good with what they did? Okay, so where do we go? What? The given. We always got to start with the given. Exactly right. So write it down, AB is parallel to CD, and AD is parallel to CD. Anytime that they give us parallel lines, where should our mind go again? Alternate interior angles. So here again, picking out what are alternate interior angles for some people are the confusion part. When you start to do this, make sure that your angle that you're going to say has to touch the transversal and the set of parallel lines. So, what do you think? Give me one step that we could do. And again, if the step that somebody says right here, right now, is different than your step, do not get frustrated. Your steps could still be totally right. 
You do not have to go in the same order as everybody else. That's kind of the nice thing about proofs. So again, blah, 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 given. Just make sure that you write everything out. Don't leave anything out when you're writing the given. Next step, somebody. Okay, what, what leads us then after you know the parallel lines, where does that lead us? What angles are congruent to each other? Now this one's tricky too because you got to make sure that you use three letters. So anytime that you have a quadrilateral, what I would do is actually physically come up here and draw this line right here has to be congruent to this line right here. Is that true? Are those on the opposite side of my transversal? Yeah? Okay. So now, specifically, tell me what those angles are. A, B, D, perfect. Is congruent to angle C, D, B, awesome. And the reason why? Alternate interior angle. Now what? Reflexive property, awesome. Anytime that we have a transversal, that means that we probably made two different lines, or sorry, two different triangles, not two different lines, two different triangles. So the reflexive property is always going to work. Remember, the reflexive property is just telling that that segment is congruent to itself. So what are we going to say? Awesome. Right. So again, notice, when I look up here, I see two things, right? I see my arcs and I see my slashes. Again now, this is where some people fall into the trap, kind of what Aiden said at the beginning. Just because we have parallel lines and we put those little um, arrows on there doesn't mean that they are congruent to each other. They're just trying to help you out. So, where do I go? We erased one of them, but that was uh, angle side angle. This is angle, angle, side. We had side, angle, side the other day. We've already thrown out side, side, side because we got one angle. So what's my next thing? How do I get to one of those other three ways to prove that these are congruent? Amen, brother. Name them. A, D, B. B, B, C by alternate interior angles. So here's the question. Why can I do both sets of alternate interior angles in this one and sometimes I can't? Well, specifically in this one I could because they gave me both things, both opposite sides of my quadrilaterals were parallel. Okay? So, why can I prove that my triangles are now? Triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle C, D, B. And again, I'm just using the proof in my problem. Why? Because again, I don't want to count or I want, don't want to think as much and I know that this has to be true. And if they screwed up the order, then it's basically the test fault or the book fault, not your fault. But why can I say this? Angle. Side angle. So again, I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to, should have probably done this first, but say this is congruent to this. And then as Kenzie said, we gotta go in order, angle, side, angle. Or angle, side, angle. Now again, 
If they would have said, well, prove that this segment is congruent to this segment, then we would have went one step further and we would have used CPCTC again. Okay. How'd that one go? Getting better? Again, more practice. So this is the one that gets funky. Yeah? So, try to draw this on a piece of paper. Now, the suggestion I have for you in this problem right here is that if this bothers you, take the time to draw the figure, but pull it apart. So what I'm saying is, If that helps, do that. All I did was take this triangle right here and write it right there, and this triangle right there and write it right there. For some people, that helps out. For some people, it makes it harder. So you have to decide which one you want. Exact same thing, just two different ways of looking at it. Okay. So this is what I want you to do for um, over overnight. This is the only thing you have to do for overnight. That's problem right here. So make sure you write down the given and the proof. And then tomorrow we'll do the assignment and you can look at it in class until we only got 20 or 25 minutes. So don't forget the given. Now in this case right here, this is one where to me, the book could have written these things into this one. Why? Because there's nothing I can do from what they gave me in the given. It, they don't tell me, bless you, that it's a bisector or a midpoint or anything like that. So go ahead and put those two things that they gave you in the given, mark it on your figure right away. And then try to figure out what you're going to do from there. Looks to me like there is one, two. They only have three more steps besides the given. So they only do it in four steps. So see if you can do that one right there. All right. Any questions?